You are now listening to the Team OD Podcast, where conversations are centered around anything and everything outdoors related. Welcome to today's episode. Hello everyone, uh, this is Taylor and Gunner. Uh, we're Team OD, we're the two co-founders, and uh, we're excited to bring you guys a new podcast. Uh, this is something that's been in the works for, I don't know, Gunner, have we talked about it, what, two or three years? Forever, I feel like. Yeah. And yeah. Then, uh, and then we talked about it for two to three years, and then uh, it took us about three days to actually get set up and do it. So uh, here we are, and we're excited. So this will be yeah. episode one. Um, we're going to talk about how we get started. Or how we got started, I guess. Sorry. We're also uh, we're going to have to learn how to talk to each other through a mic. That's going to be a little different. So excuse us <laughs> if anything uh, gets kind of weird for a minute. But uh, we'll get it figured out. So uh, here we go. Um, we're going to get how we got started. Um, our first topic is how we got started in the outdoors. So Gunner, if you want to start, and I'll follow yeah. up when you're done. So I kind of got started because I was born into it, uh, how I think a lot of us were. Um, my dad started taking me when, I mean, I was in diapers. I mean, he carried a diaper bag with him and, uh, put me over his shoulder. Um, uh, and we just head out to the woods. I think the first, one of the first ever memories I have, um, was when, uh, I fell asleep behind a blind <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, that my dad made out of a carpet. And I woke up to a like 140 inch deer jumping over the carpet. Uh, onto the neighbor's property dad was trying to shoot that deer so bad because i was with him um so like i was like three or four it's crazy i remember that but i do um but yeah i i mean i started from the day i could walk you know he carried me in there with him so you know so uh i kind of got started the same way uh maybe i didn't get started quite as young in the hunting side uh definitely for fishing you know i was out there with my grandpa uh when i went and stayed with them or with my dad and uh, but I, I I don't remember quite the age that I uh, got started in the hunting picture. But uh, really, the only hunting I knew growing up was deer hunting. I mean, I didn't know that there was any other hunting. And uh, so I got started. Um, I remember some of the first trips with my dad. We had this place called a uh, um, uh, we called it Bucks, is what it's called. Uh, I think so. I'm trying to think. No. It's called Wimpy's. We had a place called Wimpy's, and uh, his favorite spot was uh, on this big, this big boulder, and it overlooked down this bottom where this old train tracks came through. And uh, we always took a blanket or something because that was easy for me to lay on. And uh, well, I kept, I kept trying to beg my dad into going, and uh, he was, you know, as I, I like, I, said, I don't remember the age, but I kept begging him, and he was like, uh, well, I could hear my my brother is old enough to hunt by himself. I kept hearing him talking about this big buck they're seeing. And I kept going, dad, take me. Dad, I want to go. I'm old enough. My friends get to go, you know, trying to give everything I could to, to go. And uh, he finally took me. And I remember on the way there, he was like, hey, take this medicine. And, uh, you know, it will make sure that you don't cough or anything. I was like, oh, well, you know, as a kid took it. Well, I don't remember much of that hunt because uh, I got a little older and figured out that that medicine was Benadryl. And he was scared that I was going to scare this big deer he's been seeing. So I slept the whole hunt. And I remember getting there. And I remember opening up my little sleeping bag, crawling in it. And that's all I really remember that morning. So that's kind of the first experience I got um, from there on out is just me and my dad, um, deer hunting. Me, my dad, and my brother, and Uncle John, we just went out. Um, we pretty much leased everything or bought anything we had at the time uh, between my dad and John. And, uh, you know, those are memories that are priceless. You know, I, some of those I was kind of aggravated at growing up. But looking at them now, just like the story I told you, I mean, that's hilarious. But uh, I just remember, you know, every time something happened, um, and I, I know I've experienced this, me and you do this too. Every time something happened, the first people we called when I was that age was John and my brother. And yeah. uh, we went running. And uh, to go, you know, pretty much be like kids on Christmas morning and celebrate with everyone when we killed a big deer. And I know you guys did that with G Paul quite a bit and Blaine maybe. Yeah. Some of the earliest memories I can remember. Um, when I was younger, we used to have a lease up by Medford mm -hmm. uh, right on the Kansas line. And we take <laughs> G Paul and Blaine up there. G Paul is my grandpa. Blaine Phillips is my grandpa's uh, best friend at the time. Still best friends. Yeah. And they do everything together, but we would roll up there early, early in the morning to get their shooting light. And one of the, my favorite memories probably ever was uh, we had Blaine up in 
I don't remember what kind of stand we had him in. It was we kind of set him up hoping he'd shoot something this time because mm-hmm. it just so happens every time we go out there, you know, everybody else is shooting deer and then Blaine's just kind of out there and we're like, we got to get Blaine a buck. <laughs> we, we get out there. We're like, dang it, man, this is bad luck. We get out there. Uh, there's a buck coming at Blaine and my dad's like texting him like, are you going to shoot this deer, Blaine? He's like, he's like, I don't got no bullets. I didn't bring no bullets with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, that makes a whole lot more sense now. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. I've I've talked a lot but with you guys, and it seems like he just likes to go to be there. It doesn't sometimes doesn't even seem like he wants to kill anything. No, and, so uh, which yeah. I mean, each our own, but that's pretty cool. I mean, that he enjoys it that much. He just wants to be there. So he I'm not. Like, I have to go. I have to try to kill something. I got to get something down. And if I don't, I mean, I'm not too upset. But if I do, then. I kind of get to brag about it and joke around ever with it to everyone. Right. So, yeah, he just so G Paul's like this now. He he's looking for a pig. Yeah, I mean, we went out to Pahuska because we all drew that uh, that hunt over at the Western Wall, mm-hmm. and they first meeting they were like, "Yeah, if you see a pig, shoot it, let it lay." I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, first morning, he's out there just laying waste to pigs. <laughs> and he's he's like oh i didn't see no deer i saw a couple of pigs i shot them we're like yeah makes sense now but oh. so uh we'll go ahead and roll number two topic it's how we got introduced to new hunting and i kind of covered that growing up or i kind of you know went over that growing up i didn't know there's anything but deer hunting and mm-hmm. uh and then i got to an age where people started talking about turkey hunting and i was like wait people hunt turkeys dad you know and then mm-hmm. i went to predator hunting and i was like dad people shoot coyotes and you we, we don't do this you know and i'm like we have all this land and you're telling me we just deer hunt and he's like we well, yeah, have never done anything like that he's like so backstory my dad had my dad actually lost his dad when my dad was 18 and they did a lot of quail hunting so growing up i did forget to mention that uh, my dad had bird dogs i mean i think we had a 42 kennel operation going on if i remember but most times they weren't full but he did training we boarded dogs um we're kind of in a whelping pen like if you know someone didn't have the setup they'd bring it to us and give us a daily rate so i remember growing up around bird dogs but i never got to quail hunt because at that point when i was born uh the quail really in oklahoma kind of vanished and uh, he just did a lot of trials and i just wasn't old enough yet but uh so i knew about quail hunting i knew that was a thing and, uh, you know, I started talking to friends and they were like, yeah, me and my dad go do this and go do that. And, you know, and I got older and I'm just like, dad, why don't we do this? And of course he told me, I really be honest. I don't know how, you know, I didn't really grow up doing it. This is what I grew up doing. Same thing with fishing. I grew up with my mm-hmm. grandpa catfishing and I had no idea you could bass fish for the longest time. Like I didn't know anything. And, uh, you know, at that age we weren't handed a phone, you know, we mean, yeah. I mean, even at your age at that point, we still, it's, you know, it wasn't, we just didn't get a hand in the phone and get to start looking at all this TikTok and YouTube. We just went with the flow. And maybe if our parents were driving, we got to play wor- um, snake. I meant not worm on their phone or Tetris, you know? So that's what kind of, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Well, I started meeting people and uh, my dad was a coach too at the time. So we, and we own Click Steakhouse and Pawnee. So I always had people, you know, coming in, in camo during deer season um, when we got in, you know, and so we went in there and always talked to the people. And uh, it wasn't till like, I want to say fourth grade that I started uh, doing other hunting. And oh, another thing, I didn't even know you could duck hunt. It was, I don't know why I never thought of that. It was probably third, fourth grade. I started uh, really looking into things and was like, dad, let's try this. And, you know, he's like, okay. So I think we tried uh, turkey hunting for a couple years. Um, off record, if my dad watches this, I'm sorry. He tried to mouth call and do some other stuff, and it did not sound that great. And so we kind of quit that. But I will back. I will say, uh, I've never had coyotes come as close as it did during turkey season. The few years I did get to hunt with them, and yeah. I mean they were running in. So that if that tells you the calling was a little. Uh. So we kind of gave up on that for a few years because we had a rough time. Um, and then uh, I think I was in sixth grade. Um, I was like, hey, dad, I want turkey hunting. He's like, I'm not going to go chase those stupid things. And I was like, well, John told me I could hunt his 160. Like, can you drop me off? And he's like, oh, you're not going to kill anything out there by yourself. But yeah, I'll drop you off, whatever, you know. And 
And uh, so we drove out there and dropped me off. And uh, I started just walking this road. And, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I needed, I watched a few. At that time, YouTube was kind of getting kicked around, some stuff like that. And it was getting bigger. And uh, so I was watching TV shows, how to turkey hunt. Um, I don't know who gave me the two decoys I had, but they pretty much looked like crows. I mean, they didn't even look like a freaking <laughs> turkey at that point. Yeah. And uh, I go walking in there and I call. And I'm pumped. I mean, I'm shaking. He drops me off. I'm getting shaky. He hasn't dropped me off. I've never really hunted by myself at this point. I'm getting shaky walking in, just getting pumped up. And uh, I remember walking around this corner, and I was sorry, I had a little box call, a little spring one, and I did it. And uh, I heard one, and I was like, oh, that was my mind. No way. So I walked a little farther, did it again, nothing. And I was like, yeah, you're hearing stuff, Taylor. Like, calm down. You know, you're not going to kill anything. It's kind of being hard on myself. And I walk up this top, and I said, I put the little call away. I had another call in my pocket that I bought. And it was a little Primo, it was a little box call, and I get it out, hit it. And actually, I didn't even buy it. I'll, I'll be honest. My brother uh, could drive at that point, and he had some calls and stuff. So that day, uh, like a week before I knew turkey season was, I went to his truck and stole this call because I liked it. And uh, I still don't know if he ever knew where that call went because I hit it forever. Anyway, so we walk in the corner, pull the box call out, strike it a couple times, and he, I mean, he just blows up. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder where he is. Well, at this time, if I would, if that would happen anytime we hunted, like at this point, I knew how to get down and set up and get ready. I just kept walking. So I took another step or two, uh, or I went, you know, kind of up this, it kind of like loops around like a horseshoe and then goes up to a food plot and then a horse around, or then it kind of wraps around and goes down to the soybean field. I'm like 50 yards from this food plot. And I come around the cedar, and that turkey's in the middle of the road. And I, I knew from watching videos that turkeys could see. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I just screwed up this whole deal. And uh, he didn't really act scared. I don't know if he knew really what I was, because I don't know if I fully came out from behind that cedar tree for him. So I just laid down, stuck the decoy in, put it up, and crawled back into the cedar tree. I'm telling you, I'm just three foot from the cedar tree. And uh, I called, and he blew up. And here he came, and I shot it. Uh, so we're about eight minutes from where we lived at and uh, from like from the where my dad dropped me off to our house is about eight minutes. I shot it and called my dad and was like, hey, come back. And he's like, you're giving up. And I was like, no. I said, I have one down, dad. And he's like, no, you don't. And I was like, dad, please just come get me. I'm, I got one. I promise you I'll meet you at the gate, take some pictures of it. And uh, he goes, I'm not even back to town, Taylor. And I was like, <laughs> dad, I'm not pulling your leg. And uh so that kind of hit it off turkey after that i kind of learned how to mouth call and uh you know since then i've harvested a lot of birds i wish i had my hat in here maybe we can talk about that some other time but i have an old hat that i've worn since day one mm -hmm. and uh i put little marks in that gunner scene i put little marks in every time i'm either calling a bird for someone in that or i shoot one and i don't know where we're at but i think we're at right around 30 ish so that's kind of got started turkey hunting. Same thing, predator hunting. My dad bought a call. We went out, started calling him in, and uh, he was busy. I mean, he was trying to teach. He was trying to run the business. So anytime he could, we would try to go. Um, and then duck hunting, uh, I grew up, of course, I started jumping ponds like I feel like a lot of people do. And then one pond we pulled up to, there was a whole, whole lot of birds on it. And I was like, I was a Cody, my buddy Cody Dollarhead at the time. And I, and I just got my first duck call like a week before this. And I said, I think we maybe should come back and hunt this tomorrow. I was like, my brother has like 18 decoys at the house. Like he, he won't, he won't mind. So we didn't jump it. We told his stepdad, Hey, can you drop us off in the morning? And he's like, what time? And uh, I was like, whenever shooting light is, you know, we'll get there then. And uh, so we showed up, set in some trees, got there stupid late, but there wasn't any birds in that field. He had threw out, I think it was like 16 decoys. And, uh, and uh, we, I mean, it took us no time. We were shooting little 20 gauges, sitting in these trees. I mean, it took us no time to get our 12 birds. And we we're like, wow, this is a lot funner than j jumping ponds. So that's kind of how my addiction to duck hunting started. And uh, so other than that, it's kind of grew from there. I finally learned you could fish for other things. And as soon as I started driving, um, I mean, the world was mine when it came to this. And that's kind of where uh, it started. And once I, you know, I, like those stories happened, but then when I started driving, it was, I mean, I even, I didn't play sports and part of the reason is that was so I could hunt. And, uh, so that's kind of where I got started. So, yeah, I, 
was introduced to turkey hunting when I was really young. I probably yeah, I missed. Backstory real quick. I wish I had it to pop it up, but I always, I, when I first met Gunner, and we'll get into this for a while. Like we, yeah. me and Gunner have not known each other our whole life, but we pretty much yeah. known of each other through a lot of people. But when I first got and met him or I, I was friends with his dad and stuff on Facebook and all that, they always posted this. I thought it was dumb picture of how Gunner held his Turkey. He was like held it by the head. And uh, I learned later on that was like, they did that on his first Turkey just like on accident. And that was kind of like the thing to do from here on out. So anyways, you can go ahead. I just always thought it was funny because Gunner always yeah. had, was holding the head up and I was always like, why what's going on with that? <laughs> but uh, that's a, that's a funny memory I have of first time I saw a picture of that of you. Yeah. So I got introduced to Turkey hunting when I was really little, like, I was rolling out there with the 410. My dad was carrying me through poison ivy because I was <laughs> so allergic to poison ivy. I'm not as bad now. I'm so allergic to it. But like mm -hmm. back then, it was like, get a shot or you're going to turn into a puffer fish. Like, yeah, me too. Bad stuff. So he would carry me through the woods and stuff. And I can't tell you how many birds. So I would hit birds and they would just like fly off. I don't know. So then dad was like, I'm going to stick this 12 gauge on your shoulder as like a five year old. <laughs> my you know and it blew me up so like i don't know how many turkeys i missed when i was younger but i missed a lot and it, it got to a point to where like i don't really fall turkey hunt now really like if, if i'm carrying a bow um, yeah one comes by I'll, I'll shoot one but like i'm not rolling out there because i'm i love deer hunt way too much you know turkeys in the spring you know i love turkey in the spring but if it's the fall you know October, November, I'm out there chasing deer, but it got to a point and dad doesn't really either, but it got to a point where we rolled around the corner and we saw a bunch of turkeys. Dad put a rifle in my hand and said, we're breaking this seal now. <laughs> so we, we roll over there and we, you know, we hit a Creek and I come up over the top and he's like, okay, shoot that one. He was pointing at Jake. I don't know. I'm tiny. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I think I was like six or seven. Yeah. I shoot and he's like, how did you miss? And I'm like, I didn't miss. And I shot a turkey that's like 150 yards out there with my rifle. And there was one like 50 yards. I shot like one of the only Toms in the group back there. And he was like, why did you do that? But he's like, I'm glad you did. <laughs> so but we rolled out there and he's like, well, I'm glad you hit it that we took that goofy picture. But um, yeah. And then, uh, so that was, you know, I was introduced to turkey hunting really young and then me and taylor started turkey hunting together quite a bit taylor's had some horrible luck yeah the last couple I'm years try so. spell. well last we'll talk about that was in colorado but whatever that was a big one but i'm talking like oklahoma you're on a dry spell and it's, oh it's like it's not even your years. fault one yeah. of them wasn't even your fault we'll talk about yeah. that in a little bit but uh it's unreal but yeah don't get me so <laughs> but uh uh i just really i'm i'm new to waterfowl hunting uh, really last couple of years, I think I started, I was a senior in mm -hmm. uh, high school as I think when I, so kind of funny, my dad took me on a goose hunt for my birthday when I was, I might've been a junior, might've been the year before I started hunting with you guys and we killed a lot of geese and I was like, this is kind of fun, but I don't really know what I'm doing, but I went with a bunch of people that knew what was going on. So I was like, okay, this is fun. And then I got asked to go with you guys and yeah. I, that was like one of the craziest hunts I still have yet to have been on because it was literally like as fast as you could load yeah. you were shooting at more birds. So then yeah. I was hooked after that. So like, it was literally like, as soon as we'd shoot Taylor, would be like, get down more, come and load your guns. <laughs> and it'd be just whoever could load first was shooting that group. Like it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like we were, I think we were picking up at like seven forty-five. Yeah. And we had like eight people there. Like that's how ridiculous this was. So I'm relatively new to the waterfowl game. Now fishing wise, I've bass fished quite a bit like ponds and bank fished. You're mm -hmm. way more into the thick of things when it comes to the fishing side of things. Like you've got the boat. And I've got a, pontoon but i noodle you noodle too yeah. but like most things i do in the lake is noodle you go out in the lake and you catch 50 catfish i yeah. i don't do that as much as you do but um 
that's so kind of yeah go ahead that i was gonna say the, the predator hunting side you're more into that too i do it some but you're way more into that side than i am but so a pretty cool backstory on fishing so uh, my family had a um they used to like every summer have like two or three, maybe more trips to a lake. Um, I want to say it was, uh, my grandpa's told me a story a million times, Luger, Luger Lake. And uh, they would go out there and uh, take all the family. I mean, absolutely. Like, I mean, we were probably the people that you rolled up and were like, oh my gosh, you know, they're here again. But uh, oh, no, but, off the lake. yeah, they made their own like stink bait and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so um it, it's unreal like the stories my grandpa has on it and i i mean i've talked to him about it a million times but they would go out there and uh, my uncle ben was there i i don't remember uncle ben the only thing and this is pretty uh x-rated but the only thing i remember of him was going to his funeral when i was old older old enough to remember so that's the only thing that's yeah. i mean that's how i remember him i don't like i'm saying i'm saying that as i do not i did not know the guy but yeah. my family has told me my whole life. They're like, we don't know what it was. We go with Uncle Ben. He could be in the middle of 50 people and catch the fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're like, he always laughed and uh, would say, it's the oil on my hands. You know, he, he always kept saying, I have a certain oil on me. Like, and you just make jokes about it. And, you know, growing up, I heard those. And I was fishing with my grandpa. And uh, we'd sit, sit right beside each other. If, or, you know, if I had a friend with me, or my brother went. I would always catch a fish and he'd just be like, uncle Ben is, he's like, you have a part of uncle Ben and he's like, you have his blood in you. Cause this is unreal. And, you know, I just sit there and would be that. I remember one day we were just perch fishing cause the catfish weren't buying biting. I was at like 48 and my grandpa was at three and we were like this far from each other with our corks. Like it was unreal. And he would just tell me that. So that's a pretty, that's kind of, you know, I like my fishing, um, I don't know. I've always just seemed to be able to find them and I'm not trying yeah. to be like, look at me, but it's just something about it that I've been able to have in this natural eye. And that's kind of why I ended up buying the boat because I got tired of, this is what's funny too. I take people to the spots I knew about fishing in their boat and I never had a boat. And uh, I got to the point uh, financially and after I graduated to buy this boat and uh, here I am, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm excited. I really, that's another thing we get to bring out to you guys this year is the fishing side. And I think, I think I'll be able to educate some people on that. So I'm excited about that. But no, that hunting trip you're talking about, the duck hunting trip, I remember, um, you know, when our top, our next topic is how me and Gunner uh, met. And this story starts with that hunt. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember, you know, we had a mutual friend at the time. And uh, heck, I'll say we have a mutual friend at this time still, I guess. And uh, we, like, I knew of Gunner. Gunner knew of me. Uh, I knew of Steve. Steve knew of me. And, uh, you know, I just heard all these stories about my mom. I saw all these pictures. Um, our church would have, uh, it was October, November when they did the, where they hung all the, the outdoor series. Yes. And they always I brought mounts. So. And I remember bringing uh -huh. my mounts and putting them up. And they were always kind of up front. And I remember Gunner's dad bringing theirs. And they were kind of up front. And uh, I just remember going, how do I not know these people? Like, I hear about the places they lease. I know where they hunt. It's kind of creepy, but I knew where they hunt. Yeah. I hear people talk about them. I hear people be like you and the Womax, you know, and I'm like, yeah, they, you know, and I always thought like, they sound like great people. I need to know them. Well, leading up to that hunt, uh, our mutual friend kept going, Hey, we need to provide Gunner. He kind of got some decoys. He has some spots. Uh, you know, we have some spots. Maybe we can kind of bounce off each other and not put our uh, pressure, our spots as much. And I'm like, that's a great idea. Like that's someone we've been looking for from day one because we were limited spots. So if we could find someone to bring them in and get started hunting with them, then, you know, we can share off, uh, you know, share our spots and just kind of, you know, be like what well, turned into, I cover a certain part of decoys, Gunner covers a certain part of decoys. And that's kind of what we were looking for. Well, we take, uh, I found this pond and uh, I was like, oh, I called our buddy and I was like, call Gunner. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> get him on this one. And uh and then Gage, Gage was there that day. Mm -hmm. And uh he hadn't hunted that much. I took him on maybe a hunt the year before, or maybe is that year, and it was the same thing. It was four man, four man limit in like 20 minutes. And uh so we took Gunner out, and I remember I saw it. Yeah, it was unreal. I mean, it was 
I didn't know what was going on. Like that was like, yeah, I'd been on one other one that was a decent hunt. The rest of the hunts I've ever been on was me and dad just kind of, we set up decoys and we were shooting at like divers, like speeding by us. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I had so much fun doing that, but I hadn't had like a mallard dump like that. Yeah. Yeah. They were landing like 15 yards. They weren't landing more than 15 yards in front of us, you know, anywhere from five to 50. And I mean, when they were coming in, it wasn't, all right, here they come. It was load up, put an extra bullet in your hand, do something. Because when they leave, we're going to have to sh- – I mean, they just were just right there. It was like one of those things you dream about. They were right there. Yeah. It so was like we hard- – Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. There was like hardly – I mean, you called, but like we mm-hmm. didn't even have to really call at them. Like, yeah, I didn't They would just anything. drop from the sky. It was almost like everything was frozen but our place, but it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that, that place – was the only open water it was yeah it was like emulating something like that but they were just just boom, boom yeah it was just, definitely everyone talks about on the or being on the x that was the that that day was there and uh we had a couple other hunts like that there but uh mm-hmm. and from that year did, was that the year that we went up by your had your place and uh rust was here and we killed or was that the year mm-hmm. after that was that year wasn't that it? was the year i remember because you took me on that and i was like I gotta get I gotta get yeah. hunt for these guys back. Like that was crazy. And I had jumped this pond before the years prior. And there wasn't as many birds, but we had jumped it before. And mm-hmm. I remember pulling by it and I was like, I can go out there. And I remember pulling by it going, Whoa, I can't even see water out there. This is yeah. a perfect opportunity. So I start, I'm like, I'm like, let's go to this place. And I mean, I'm sure you guys walking up there, you were like, this looks like a well, Mud see, I, I'd seen some ducks hitting it because it technically they're hitting was it was soybean, wasn't it, or is it Milo or corn? It was, it was in a pasture that was soybeans across the fence. That's what I'm they saying. This, yeah, they were and, then there was, and they were just dumping into there. Yeah, yeah, we were about 100, 150 yards from that field, and they were coming in so low they were probably a foot off the um, fence when they were coming off that field to us. I mean, it was. Insane. I remember when you called me about that because Tanner Russ was down here. And uh, I remember, uh, so we had Tanner Russ and Tanner Neely. Tanner Neely was, you know, he was a part of us at that point. And he was like, hey, Gunner wants to go here. And I was like, I felt horrible. I was like, dude, I have a buddy. I, you know, I know he's returning the favor, but I, I don't want to ask, but, hey, can my buddy come? You know, but, mm-hmm. but uh, of course we went and uh, we have six guys that day too. Yeah. And, and it was uh, a longer hunt, but we killed yeah. him. And I remember, I remember that hunt. Um, well, we 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 couldn't hit for a little bit, or they would come and they, in and like just giant. They, groups. they started to tornado, and you kept telling everybody you were like, "Do not shoot." Yeah, because because so, you were like, if they leave, they're going to come back in small groups, and they did exactly that. We had like five to eight hundred birds, if not more. I mean, just over. And we're in this pond. All right, let's take a let's make a mental picture for everyone. It's probably thirty yards wide by forty yards deep. Like you can kill you can, anything that lands on that water or was coming to land. I'm sorry, we don't water swat. That sounded bad. Anything that was coming in was gonna get it. I mean, it was. There's no way around it. And uh, we're sitting there, and I, I think we needed like ten or fifteen, maybe twenty more, because we needed thirty six, and. Uh, this group comes off and I mean, it just looked like a cloud of blackbirds and all of a sudden yeah. they come to us and they're hitting the water. And uh, I remember I was, I was huge in watching uh, avian X. I remember seeing a video of it happening to them. And, uh, you know, Fred Zink was like, don't shoot. They'll come back. Don't shoot. And then it did. So I remember in my head, I just remember, remember that video and they were over us. Like the hens were just screaming in our face. Remember that the, those hens are mm-hmm. quacking. And uh, they were making all this noise, and uh, then they just left. And uh, my heart, and I just felt like this big of a person because I didn't let, in, I didn't call the shot. I knew everyone was questioning me, and I was just sitting there in my head, going, "Please, Lord, please come back, <laughs> please come back. Don't make me look like a complete idiot on the first. Because Steve was there that day. We got old uh-huh. Steve out there, and yeah. uh, I remember I was like, "Man, this Gunner's dad's gonna think I'm a moron," and I'm like, "Oh my gosh." And lo and behold, I mean, it wasn't 10 minutes later. Oh, oh, here's two. Boom, boom, yeah. dead. Oh, oh, here's five. Boom, boom. Got a few. You know, and it was this. Yeah. Just a small group after small group. And then the last group that came in, 
we only needed like one or two, and there was like 20 of them. And I remember they fell, and everyone was like, stop, no, 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 no more shooting. And yeah. they were hollering. And uh, so that's kind of – I mean, that that right there, once we did that, that's kind of when I feel like me and you kicked off as a friend. Like, mm-hmm. I think after that hunt, we actually got each other Snapchat, if I remember right, because I was like mm-hmm. – you know, like maybe we can do some good for each other since this has happened. And uh, we have. I mean, is that 2019? That was a crazy year. Yeah, 2019 was a great year for our yeah. area for birds. I like I get chills. Like my arm hair is standing up thinking about 2019 because that was the year that, I mean. Mallards everywhere. We were, yeah, I kind of like this year, like this last few yeah. weeks on us. I mean, and uh, I mean, I remember after that 2019, me and Gunner and Tanner, we were we couldn't be apart. I mean, we could not be apart. And uh, so that's kind of how we, you know, kind of how we met. And uh, I don't know really. Uh, I know. So I've been I guided for a little bit in high school and made my own guide company. I kind of guided for some people in college. Uh, always had kind of like an outdoor group, but uh, no one really like I was trying to do solo kind of and not. And uh, I was just trying to find the right people. And uh, was it 2020 when we became a group? Yeah. No. Yeah. Cause, was it? Yeah, because that was the year of COVID. We, I thought. So we, you thought what? What year did you graduate? May 19. So are we a year off? Was it 18 when we started hunting together? We no, may have I, called it we may have called it 19 because we were, It was like 19 the 19 and 20 season, like the 2019 and 20 season. It was the 2019 20 season? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll just double check this. But uh um just give me a second. I'll, I'll get us fact checked up here, right here. No, it's 2018. 2018, 2019, we started hunting yeah. together. Yeah. 29, yeah. 2019 to 2020, we we were still hunting, but it wasn't like we were just hunting. We became, I was at, that was a year Justice was gone. Uh, my mm-hmm. girlfriend, uh, um, uh, was, yeah, that's when she was up in uh, Lawton for uh for OU med school. So yeah. uh, I kind of, I kind of just was like, you know, anytime Gunner's eating, I'm going to go over on the weekends. I pretty much was with you and Tanner, like any chance I can get on the weekends. And we didn't really, uh, if we didn't stay with each other, it was, we left at like one in the morning <laughs> for me to come back at four in the morning to hunt. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's what, that's, that's the years. Okay. We were, I was off in my head. And then, so we grew real close that year, all three of us, uh, me and Tanner were close before then. I mean, like we were really, really close and uh it was what 2020 2021 season that's when you shot uh that's when we kicked off wasn't it 2020 starts so it was the 2019 season i guess i've been a year off uh we grew we grew really good friends the year before all three of us and then this 2019 season i was like hey why don't we all buy cameras i have one tanner was just bought one why don't we all buy cameras and start uh and we had some other people involved at the time why don't we start mm-hmm. uh, like a group, you know, and let's let's jump in. And uh, I remember the conversations of, well, what are we going to do? I was like, oh, video what we do, hunting, you know. And, and yeah. uh, that's really kind of what got us uh, started. 2019, um, we had no idea what we're doing. I don't know if we still have an idea what we're doing, but I think we have a better idea. <sighs> well, I dropped but the ball. We'll talk about that. On 19? Yeah. Yeah, so 2019, we get started. Um, we, me and Tanner had uh, at the time had uh, cameras. We were rolling, and uh, was it the 19th or the 18th? You said the the day I posted it about him. Mm-hmm. 23rd. Oh yeah, so so that was the day. So did you was yeah. that the evening post that you were going to bed? Yeah, that was the first. Yeah, that was the original. Just yeah. Yeah, so let's. So we started the season. Had no idea what we we're doing. We knew we we're gonna try the video. Um, Gunner had an absolute giant on camera that year. Um, yeah, was it four? It was like three or four days before you shot him. I shot one, and we went out and looked for it. it was it would have been my biggest buck to date. 
but I messed up, drew back, uh, smoked my elbow on the um, blind behind me, made a big thump noise. And he looked up and I shot and he ducked and I hit him in no man's land mm-hmm. and uh, we couldn't find him. And uh, I remember being upset. I was like, wow, our first opportunity, you know, like, wow, I kind of kind of fumbled the bag on that one. And uh, it was a couple of days later. Um, we knew what Gunner had. I mean, if you guys haven't, if you guys don't know us um, for what we're talking about, then you're pretty new. But uh, I mean, it's in our, it's right here. It's on the corner of your screen, I guess. On the, well, my screen's back on this side. Yeah. Um, that's Gunner shot that buck eight by eight, um, called the Womack buck. We're not going to talk a lot about it because we're going to do a podcast about it. That's kind of what we're um, hoping to do. And uh, mm-hmm. Gunner shot that deer, and uh, it took um, three kids that had no idea what they're doing um, to the next level, and we we grew faster than we were ready for. Yeah, I mean, to say the least on that. Yeah, I mean, we're on Meat Hunter, we were on Outdoor Channel, and uh, you know, we white tail, yeah. Um, I mean, we were on so much, and we were just kids, you know, and it's crazy to think about that because we were hoping, worst comes to worst, we had videos to show our grandkids when we get um, older. And uh, was that the year that we first year we went to Colorado together? I think it was right before that season. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went Good to Colorado, time. got all this footage. Um, we spent, you know, I had a couple years of footage because I always ran a camera um, early on. So we had all this footage saved up. And uh, that was also the year that uh, we mentioned Justice was in school. That was the year that I plugged in my um, drive to her computer and then encrypted it like her school computer is so she couldn't share the records of the people she was seeing at the hospital down there. So encrypted my, all of our video, like three years worth and uh, threw us beyond the video. So, um, and let's go back. One of our goals was to spread our faith through this platform. And uh, what happened on the, what, 22nd is that we said? 23rd. 23rd. What happened on the 23rd mm-hmm. and, uh, you, I, you cannot say that was not a God-given gift. So, um, yeah, it was, it was little. My caption was literally "wild." That's all I've got. Yeah, and it blew up. I didn't think. Yeah, it was, oh, it was quite that. It was unreal. I mean, gonna text me like so and so reached out. Should I tell him I want to be on there? And I'm like. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, don't tell them yeah. no. Those are people that we only dream about being on, you know. Meat Eater called yeah. or uh, did a report. Outdoor Channel messaged us. was like, would you guys like to do a live podcast? Or, yeah, it was like a live podcast kind of set up. And we were like, well, yeah. I remember getting yeah. ready for that. We all matched. I and, do remember uh, we were, that. We were so nervous. I was nervous, yeah. I didn't do, you remember when that Tanner, do you remember Tanner got up the sw- wet in his armpits <laughs> yeah he, Dude, he was rich his back was he, he, he looked looked at me he's like just act natural buddy we got this i'm like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what because i was so that, tiny tiny i was yeah. i mean you guys were young i was like 18 yeah and i mean yeah i mean you guys we were all kids but like i rolled in that thing like Fresh out of hadn't even had a oral communications class, you know. Yeah. In college, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, oh man, I had one, and it still didn't prepare me for that day. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I just remember, yeah. but like I said, we'll go. That might be podcast number two. Um, yeah. I, I, re- we really need to dedicate something to that because, um, I know we story. Used it. Not, yeah. yeah. Not just the whole what story. happened, just everything else. Yeah, and afterwards, like what, the yeah. aftermath, like this, yeah, just what we talk mm-hmm. about. Of, I mean, we won't get into it now, but, but I remember that day. I just remember that happening, and uh, there's no other reason that it would happen. Just, I mean, God had a plan for us, and He opened the door fast, and He opened it so fast that we weren't ready for it. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I I do all the editing, and uh, um, I had all these videos ready. Uh, 
then they get encrypted and I and they basically said, Hey, we can't undo that. So you're pretty much SOL on that one. And I remember having to tell everyone that out, oh, man, I was I was so upset at myself. Yeah. And because we had like eight complete videos on there and what was, we were already ready. We had enough stuff to be ready for like be a year behind. So like for what happened for what we'd released in 2020 had been like 2019 and then we were going to fill in. Well, then that came and wiped everything out. And so we've been kind of behind. But uh, um, but uh, the like the so we were kind of behind, but that kind of goes to uh, what we also do is also we do charity events. And uh, that's kind of where our heart kind of led us to. And uh, we've raised quite a bit of money for some people in our community doing a fish fry. We've done a fish tournament. We've done a hunting, uh, like a coyote tournament. We've done a pig hunting tournament. Um, this year we did something new. We, need, we did crow and pigs. Great turnout. Probably do that again. Um, yeah, go ahead. people can smoke some crows, let me tell you. Yeah, not me. <laughs> not you. Uh, but um, so, yeah, that kind of that stuff kind of took over. Um, we won't go into a lot of detail. I'm sure eventually we'll go into detail on that stuff. Uh, but we've helped several people in our community when we feel like there's an area that we can plug in and help. We always do it. And uh, we eventually hope or one of our goals. This is what n- our another topic is, is uh, uh, what have we done? Like, what else do we do? And uh, it's these charity events. And I mean, we eventually want to get to the point where um, we're not just raising a couple of thousand. We want to make a we want a big we want to make a big statement um, mm-hmm. using our platform of being able to help. And, uh, you know, we have people reach out all the time like so and so can help so and so can help and or so and so needs help. And I really wish we could help everyone. I wish I was at the point in the life where I was set up to where someone need help. We can do it but we're not. So we kind of pick and choose. And uh, here recently it's been people in our personal community of Morrison. And I think Mm -hmm. eventually we're going to, well, last year we did a fire victim down by McAllister. So we have ventured out, but I'm hoping here lately that we can grow on that or here. Yeah. I guess here lately. Yeah. We, it'd be nice to be able to expand. I mean, of course we're going to get back to our communities. It's where we came from, but uh, it'd be nice to, uh, to be able to continue to expand our reach because Mm -hmm. that's just, I don't know, that's just part of it. But um, I mean, yeah, we hope to, to expand our charity stuff. We hope to expand our reach, not just with charities, with our our messages and Mm -hmm. stuff like that as well. Um, Eventually uh, like have a self-sustaining type thing to where we can just kind of roll in and continue to roll into the different things we want to do. So that's kind of the, well, and then, uh, you know be uh more proactive with uh our content as well um yeah we've been yeah that's we've, that's about it i mean yeah continue we've struggled. yeah you got this I mean, we've struggled on our on our stuff just because we lost so much and then so that was a that's been a pressure of us is uh try to get stuff on film but we are we we do not have anyone else in the stand with us every now and then i might go video gunner yeah. gunner might come video me um, thankfully we added a couple people or to a team over the years and, uh, you know, like Gage, he, he's started to video a lot more stuff. He's going to help. And, uh, mm-hmm. we're just making moves. Another thing people need to remember, and uh, we do not like it, that we know a lot of people didn't know this, but we were in college at that time, you know, we were working yeah. on to pay for our rent. We were working to do all this. So we were trying to put a low income source to, what needed a higher income at the moment. And uh, mm-hmm. like I said, when we took off fast, which I'm not complaining, I mean, and we have stalled out, but uh, I think this podcast, me and Gunnar are super excited about this. Um, I feel like this is going to be a huge step. And then our filming game has went up. Um, we still have some issues here and there, but uh, I had some, I had some equipment issues this year. I didn't have a tree arm this year. Just could not. Yeah. But I that's had- like I said, everyone's like i can't believe you didn't do this didn't do that well we were also like i said on a on a college kid income if anyone knows what that is and you pretty much understand that some months you had 20 in your account end of the month and you're like man i better get a couple packs of raymond so we didn't have the ability and i grad i took three years out of college and uh gunner went straight through and he graduated this year 
and I graduated last year. So uh, that kind of why we started this podcast, because we could have enough money to afford what we're doing. Um, we still don't have all the, the equipment we want for this, but um, I think over time, you know, we will be able to get what we want. Mm-hmm. I think we can make it what we want. Um, and we'll get the biggest issue for like a guy like me with the filming side is when you get there, like let's say you get there in the morning and you're just pumped to go hunt. You know how many times I've forgotten to do like a pre-interview, like, you know, I'm mm-hmm. here doing this, this, you know, it's this time of year. I'm going to get after it. A lot of times you're just like, I'm either pumped to get in the stand. Yeah. Or I'm like, I'm up at four 30. Like, why am I up? Mm-hmm. But I love hunting so much that I'm going to drag myself to the stand. And then when the sun starts coming up, you're like, I'm glad I dragged myself to the stand. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been my biggest thing is the pre and post. And then it just seems like every, like this year, every time I'm just kind of ha- my guards half down, my buck steps out. Yeah. Like, I just that's supposed to happen. Yeah. And that's it's another just, thing. Another, I don't mean to interrupt you. That's another thing people understand is these animals that we go after, they don't follow a script. I mean, no. if they could, we would have that cinematic film that everyone has, but when you're by yourself and the deer comes in straight behind you, come running in. And I mean, technically this is why I tell people when people are like, well, how do you, what, what is it like? I'm like, it's like killing the animal twice. You got to have it on the camera and you got to kill it. I mean, yeah. And it's hard. It's so hard. Oh yeah, no, it's hard. I mean, maybe one day in a perfect world, we've got a dude sitting next to us filming, but yeah, it is not the perfect world today. We have a camera to our right, our bow to our left, a GoPro mm-hmm. in front of our face, and we have to turn them if they're not on. If we if like it's cold that day, we ain't running battery. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, we gotta turn those two cameras on, we gotta press record on both cameras, we gotta get our bow, we gotta knock it and we just got to hope that buck doesn't walk straight through in about two seconds yeah so i i know i'm i'm preaching to the choir here but i know a lot of people do it and they're really good at it but we're i'm gonna say we're relatively new and we're still learning i don't know i don't know i wouldn't say a lot of people do it and are good at it because if that's the truth i want to meet these a lot of people because that's true yeah they got they it's like said so you got if you're gonna do perfect you almost have to have someone behind you and that's what I also think is pretty cool is because we we're doing it the hard way yeah and uh, and we're I mean I'm I'm not tooting our horn but we're pretty successful at deer hunting I mean we have been given a gift and the quality of land and a drive and that's what I've always admired about Gunner is he has the same drive about deer hunting as I do and you know everyone talks about it but. There's not many days, even when it comes to killing that eight by eight there that day, like you weren't going to be out there, but me and your, me and your Tanner's drive were to get you out there. And, uh, I mean, that's what I've always admired, um, of Gunner. And, uh, I see it myself too, is our drive to get out there and our drive to want to be out there. And, uh, like you said, the batteries, there's times that I have fully charged batteries. I, I clip on this, like my first kill on, uh, YouTube, my first ar- archery buck, um, and that's another thing. I like going back on our story. I didn't even know you could really archery hunt, but uh, my first archery buck that's on our YouTube, I clicked that camera on, on, and it's dead. Like it was literally, yeah. Flipped it on, pushed record. I'm getting ready. I'm like, this is about to be so cool. My big, biggest buck to date with the, um, with the bow. Mm-hmm. And I look down there and it's flashing battery exhausted. So here I am with the my yeah. batteries are right here in this pocket. I have to zip it. No wind. There's 10 deer in front of me with this big buck walking in and I'm already doing this. I mean, so I'm sitting here, I got to take it out. I got to bring the camera in. I got to angle the camera down. I got to undo a little bit because the way it's mounted at the bottom, it, it blocked on that camera I had, it blocked where to put the battery in. So I'd unscrew it a little bit, put the battery in, clip it, re-screw it on, get it back, get it focused. And by that time it felt like eternity, but that that deer walked from 20 yards, like walked a distance of probably 20, 25 yards of standing in front of me. So I missed out a lot on that. And that's what, you know, like I said, people don't really don't understand. If you have never self filmed they don't understand how hard it is. No, it's something new all the time. I heck one of the videos we released, I was sitting out there and right before I took the shot, 
the camera died and yeah. I didn't know it died. And so, and it was like 20 degrees out there and, you know, I rolled in there. I was pumped. I'd already shot at a coyote. Did I think it was late morning when I shot at that coyote? Did I think, you know, a mature buck was going to walk? I mean, it was rut time. You I were about to leave too. Day. You were packing up to leave. Yeah, it was like, it was late and it mm -hmm. was cold. It was late. And I think Tristan was here and we yep. were going to go look for ducks. Yeah, he was vid he was videoing for me that day. Yeah, we were gonna like go look for ducks or something. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll get down. Like it's late. I haven't seen nothing for like an hour and a half. I understand what time of year it is. I get it. But we were gonna go look for ducks, and I was just as pumped to go look for ducks too at that time. Mm -hmm. I already killed something with my bow, I think. And I think yep. it, that would have been me tagging out. So I was like, Yeah, you know, I like hunting, like I'm not too sad if I don't tag out. So I was gonna roll out of there and right when I was starting to pack up. I just look up and he's standing out there with the doe. And I click the record button, shoot, and I look back. And camera's dead. Yeah, just deflating. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. People, like I said, people never understand if they until they get in the game of it. And that's where I'm at now. You know, I've had this conversation with you a couple of times last month. Of should I send my camera and get a video camera? Because I have to have a hand on the lens and most of the time a hand on the body of the camera to get where I need to go. And then if I need to zoom, like it takes two hands. And so that's why I'm leaning towards getting a video camera. And because uh, even like the coyote video we have up there, um, not the best. We were also in a tournament in that weekend. So it's not the best quality, but also my mind was on trying to win this tournament and mm -hmm. uh, and get the kill shot. So I couldn't zoom. A lot of times was, the coyotes came in, I was on them and, you know, was trying to hurry and get on before anyone shot. So it's just an unreal, like I said, you, you'll never know until you try it. And that's what it all boils down. Like, yeah, we can sit here and tell you all of our excuses, but they're not really excuses. But I will say um, our video quality has really picked up um, the last, you know, if you look back on what we started at and where we are, our video quality has picked up. Um, will we ever be the cinematic thing that people love? I don't know. But to do what those people have, I mean, they're basically running with someone. And uh, I, our whole, my whole goal is to get the whole story on camera. That's my only thing. I don't care about the quality. I, mean, I want good quality. You got to have quality to make it interesting, and uh, you got to be in the moment, you know. So yeah, but our goal from here on out, in my eyes, is to get it on film, to get the get the story on film. We get the kills, but we don't get we don't get a lot of the story. And I think that's kind of where, you know, a lot of people have lost like not really faith in us, but kind of like a, are they really going to do it? You know, and mm -hmm. and uh, like and like I said, we were we were in college. We're now not. Um, yeah. And then like last year, I was in that wreck. I really mindset was not good. I was in the wreck and lost my cousin. So I really it was two seasons now. I guess I really wasn't in the mindset to be where uh, where I, we needed to be or where I needed to be. And uh, so it's always like something tries to knock us down, but we've always came out on top. And I really think, you know this is this is our starting point of to get to where we want and uh i've talked a lot with christian with hunter's advantage and uh we always talk about you know um being in this world to get where you want you gotta have you gotta be able to communicate and you gotta have connections we've mm -hmm. built those connections we have connections with some of the best people in this world like our yeah. our army behind us is unreal and, uh, you know, like even Jocelyn, she supports everything I do. I'm sure Abby supports everything you do. Your parents, mm -hmm. my parents. I mean, it's – and then there's people that we even know that will walk out in the public and be like, hey, we, we saw you awesome. You know, and I'm like, wow, like this is unreal. Uh, Tanner mm -hmm. Russ in Colorado has worn one of our hats, and someone says, oh, D, I know who Outdoor Finance is. I, I follow him. And I'm just like, we're just random dudes in this world, you know, like – and these people are know it. so yeah. cool. Just trying to have a good old time. Yeah. And to show that how – and that's another statement we want to do is just show how the average guy can do it and be successful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, that's how we're going to do it. That's the only way we know how to do it. So, so uh, our last question, um, Gunner, you can start it, is – or our last topic is what is our goal for this podcast? 
a lot of things. Um, I think we've discussed it. We're going to have, we want to have a variety of people. Mm-hmm. We want to go into people in the industry, which means like mm-hmm. hunters, anglers, stuff like that, professionals yep. in this field. We want to talk about people that are professionals in the science in this field. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really care about uh, points of view type stuff because we like conversation. Like yep. we're going to invite people on that may you may not agree with. We may not agree with them, but oh, it's yeah. going to be a good conversation. And we're well, I mean, me and you it. don't agree on some stuff. Yeah, which you know, and, we, and we, and we that's the way it is. We're not going to agree on everything, but what works for me and might not work for you, and what works for you might not work for me. Yeah, and so. and we want to talk. We want to talk to people. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all kinds of different opinions. We're going to bring on this thing, um, and and we're going to talk to people that are like business people in this mm-hmm. industry. Like we'll talk to people at camo, you know, people at camo company, anything like that, um, anything in this space. We want to have these people, whoever it may be, on to tell their story. That's what this is about. We're telling people mm-hmm. stories. We're telling our stories, and we're having conversations about it because yeah, and that's know. what you know. Yeah. We're gonna try to get some well-known. Eventually, try. We probably won't be able to ride out the gate, but who knows? We might. Uh, okay. We've reached out to several people, um, and uh, you know, some people are, are gonna wait. Just the way the nature of the beast is, they're gonna wait until we can show what we're what we are. And uh, but another thing, you know, we, you got to talk about we're going to get people that know the science behind it. Um, very, we have some very, very interesting people coming in about that. Um, some people talking about um, their their studies on prescribed fire, uh, fish, um, mm-hmm. all sorts of things like that. But another thing we want is the average guy like us yeah. that uh, is good at what he does come in here and tell us how he does it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of what we kind of want to be able to benefit our listeners and uh, maybe give them some information that can help them and maybe, and then also us learn stuff that will help us. Cause I mean, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not stuck in our ways we got to, there's stuff that we probably need to learn to take us to the next level. But, uh, and then uh, another thing we want to do is tell our stories. I mean, we're not going to be every episode of someone on here talking about their studies or all that. It's just going to be me and Gunnar talking about some of our funny stories and, and that's kind of why we, we try to monitor what we said tonight. So in the future, you know, we won't be uh, repeating what we said. Just like Gunner's Buck. I mean, if you don't know about it, um, it wouldn't take much to look it up. Just type in the Womack Buck on Google or Gunner Womack Buck, um, and you can find the whole story. But uh, we there, there's just some stuff that we've never really came out and talked about on our end. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I think that's going to – I really think that's going to be a cool – episode but yeah we're very excited about this um you know i talk a lot in my everyday life i do sales so why why would i not do something i'm good at and that's talking I like and talk uh, too. yeah so, i like talk about this so yeah and that's it's our passion i mean we we've uh started something that like i said uh, it ignited at first and then uh we kind of stalled, but when, when, when something like that happens, you're going to blow up. I mean, think about any, anything, any buck that was killed like that, those people blow up. I mean, nowadays, if you kill that deer, you're probably going to get it confiscated and get told that you poached it. And uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Me and me and Gunnar heard some wild stories about his deer, but uh, um, yeah. it's going to, that stuff's going to blow you up and there's no, other way to keep that momentum than killing those deer again. And that's not going to happen. I mean, no, I'm wrong. There is a chance it's going to happen, but very, very, very slim. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're doing with this podcast is uh, I think it's going to be something that we can bring a lot of information to people. Uh, I think our videos are going to get better from here on out since we graduated and kind of got jobs that, give us time to focus on what we want to do versus what we have to do to get by. And that's kind of where we were in college. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm pumped too. I'm pumped. So uh, yeah, Tuesdays, every other Tuesday. So um, Tuesday, January 23rd, we'll be live with Hunter's Advantage. We're doing a live question answer with them. Um, It'll be every other Tuesday. 
Uh, to keep up with that, go on our social media. You can find us all at uh, Outer Defiance, um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. Uh, am I missing anything? Yeah. So you, keep up with us there. Um, I think we're going to try to do one a week and see how they kind of turn out if something pops up. But uh, if you guys are listening, uh, we'll be on Spotify and Apple as well and YouTube. Um, if you're listening and you know someone that would get on the show, that'd be interesting. Please have them reach out. Um, if there's someone that you can think of, you would like to get on here, like, please reach out. Uh, we'll shoot for the stars and uh, hope well, we, we'll land on them. Me and Taylor are pretty convincing. We're yeah, pretty we're pretty annoying, but we're pretty convincing. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, even if it's someone huge, um, I'm let us know. We'll, we'll reach out. The worst thing they can say is no, or uh, we've already been ghosted a few times by people. Um, hey, but mark it down. But we'll remember because uh, some of those people are people that when we took off, they were taken off, and uh, now since we're not, we can't use stuff to help them. Which, like I said, this is going to be in a whole other episode. Uh, since we don't have stuff to help them right now, they kind of forgot about us. But uh, that's fine. Um, you know, we're building connections that are going to get us to where we want to go. And uh, I think eventually that uh, one day we'll be sponsored and we'll have it where we want it, which we're not really into it for the money. We just want to get out there to be able to help everyone. So money's nice, but I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. It'd be nice if I didn't have to pay for a new bow, but I'll pay for a new bow if I have to. <laughs> hey, Matthews. Yeah. <clears throat> Matthews. But uh, no. Anyways, well, uh, Gunner, anything else to say? No, I think that covered it. Well, um, if you've listened this far, thanks for listening. Yeah. We look forward to uh, getting this going. We, Like I said, we have some – with this being our first episode, we already have some absolute awesome people that are going to come on and to give some great information. Uh, there's some other people. Like this earlier, Gunner, I got a message off Facebook or off Instagram that I messaged someone that we don't even know. And uh, they're excited. Uh, another guy I talked to, I think he can come on two or three times and talk about complete different stuff that he studied. And uh, so I think, and Gunner has Gunner has connections through his college. Um, so, or through going to school, I didn't mean to say through his college, but uh, I really think we're going to be able to bring some topics and content to you guys that you guys will be entertained. So. Yeah. I think that's it for tonight. Like I said, if you've listened, you know where to follow us. Um, we hope that you're new. I hope you got you got to hear this, and this is the first time you ever heard of this. Um, to the people that are following us and came to listen, uh, thanks for your support. We wouldn't be where we are today. And uh, episode two will be up pretty quick. Anything See, else? Yeah, deuces. <laughs>